Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Now, when it comes to governance, because see, remember, one of the objective of governance is to ensure that organization is moving into the right direction. Plus, they are continuously achieving their goal on time. And definitely, it will not only help that organization, but everyone who is working for that organization or dependent, you can say. Now, the point is, governance is what? Governance is the rule only. which rule which will going to run the organization. But is that rules are only created by the internal peoples? So when I say internal people, I'm talking about the CEO, CISO. They are typically responsible for implementing a good governance within the organization. Typically, the C-shoot. Now, in such case, we also have to understand that governance is not always internal. When I say internal, I'm talking about policies, a standard, a guideline, procedure. These are the internal governance. But governance, or you can say some rules on your organization is enforced by the third party. Those third party could be your country's laws and regulations. Those third party could be regulatory bodies. Okay. Those third party could be some industrial regulations. Okay. Which we have to follow. Why? Because the way we are operating in the market, that is actually going to define the requirement. So I generally ca categorize this governance into two categories. One is called as external governance and the another is called as internal governance. Okay. External governance. So let's suppose there is a user whose name is Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill is trying to sell their product uh, to the European market with the help of their web application. Okay. So when he is selling the product to the European market, he need to also uh, save the information about their particular customer. Okay. Uh, might be the credit card detail and debit card detail or might be their address or and very many other information. Now these informations as per European Union falls under the GDPR regulations. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So in such case, Mr. Bill have to ensure that their infrastructure is compliant with GDPR. Okay, right. And if it is not, definitely, uh, you know, a huge fine for that. It is going to be, they have to actually pay. And apart from that, definitely some uh, impact on their organization as well. Okay, so this is the one. Another regulations, we can take an example is like, suppose I'm uh, selling also the healthcare products to the uh, to US market. Okay. And there, there we have a regulation uh, that is called HIPAA, right. Health Information Portability, Portability Accountability Act. Right. right. So HIPAA is specifically talking about the PHI, Public Health Information. So before definitely selling any healthcare product uh, to my customer, I'm making sure that I have the prescription. Let's suppose I'm selling the medicines. Okay. I should have the prescriptions. Uh, from the doctor based on that i can only sell that particular drug to my customer right so that is the hip i might be receiving payment from online and uh, for that i'm going to utilize some payment gateway platform either or i'm going to build my own payment gateway platform and in such case that platform should be compliant with pci dss okay yeah. similarly organization wherever they are actually operating laws and regulations are also going to be enforced so generally, I used to tell these are the external governance. See, some this is not something I want to follow, but the way I'm actually operating in the market, I have to follow those regulations. Otherwise, there is a huge fine and reputational impact on my organization is possible. Right. So these are the external governance, which is basically telling you you have to you have to behave in a certain manner. So if you, so, let's suppose my target is basically to achieve might be twenty million dollar revenue this year. See, the two way through which I can achieve this. Okay, do all the wrong steps and achieve your target. But definitely in such case, organization cannot survive for a long run in the market. Okay. Second thing, uh, you know, uh, there is a huge risk involved here. Okay. So we, we should be following proper rules and regulations and we should be operating in a certain manner. And in such case, definitely we have to ensure that we are implementing the necessary controls there like gdpr gdpr talking about the protection of the personally identifiable information 
Okay. Yeah. But they're actually telling you have to protect this data. How to protect that is none of their concern. You can build your own framework. You can build your own standard, but you have to ensure that as per my guideline, if the data needs to be protected with AES-256 encryption, it should be implemented. How exactly you're implementing that AES-256, that is not my concern. I will send the auditor. If auditors will verify that, yes, everything is implemented properly, then you will get the GDPR compliance. Otherwise, you will not get and definitely you're not uh, authorized to operate in my market. Okay. So in such case, what the organization do, they make sure that they are creating certain policies standards to follow those external governance, but not only the external, but also organization having their own way of to operate. And they want their people, their employees to follow those rules so they can achieve things on time. So based on all this external governance or might be your own business requirement, you're going to design a high level policy. Okay, security policy here I can actually sell here. So policies are designed to mitigate a particular risk. So remember, you're creating policy because you have a specific issue within your organization and that issue you're trying to tackle it. Okay, so if I'm trying to tackle a particular issue, okay, in such case, what I'll do, first I will understand the issue. And accordingly, I'm going to design a high level documentation, which is talking about the actual or perceived threat, what we have. And based on that, a high level information given there that we should have a control which can protect my data. So like one of the policy example I can take here is the confidentiality policy, which is talking about protecting a certain set of information. Okay could be PII, could be PHI, it could be uh, credit card, debit card information, right? So if you see here, confidentiality policy is one of the requirement which all these regulations or laws are basically enforcing on me. And that's the reason I designed uh, I to have a confidentiality policy. But before this policy, confidentiality policy, it's a very much uh, good practice that we should classify the data. Because when I classify the data, I know that which data is having what severity level. If it is lost or compromised, what is the impact on my organization? So before that, you may implement a classification policy. Okay. So classification policy will classify the data based on the impact of the compromise. Okay. So first, we will do the classification of the data. On top of that, we ensure that based on the required security need, we are implementing the security control to protect the organization. So first classification policy, on top of that, we are implementing the confidentiality policy to protect the organization. The third, I mean, definitely N number of policies can be implemented. So I am not uh, telling, but one important information that policy, just a high level information enforced by the, or uh, senior management within an organization. So my, um, organizations can move in a particular way. Okay. One such a, one more example we can take here is called the incident response policy. So again, here we have a specific issue and that issue we are trying to tackle with the help of policy. But how this policy will be implemented, that is also very much necessary uh, part of the organization uh, activity. So this policy is just a high level A documentation, which is defining the intent of your senior management, what they want. But that policy should be implemented in a certain manner. And for that, we are implementing standards as well. So standards are developed or modified to set boundaries around you, around the people, process and the procedure. And even the technology, what we have, right? Why exactly we are doing? Because we have to maintain compliance with a policy. Compliance with the policy and compliance with this external governance requirement. So if we don't operate in a certain manner, let's suppose we are doing encryption to offer confidentiality. But that encryption should be based on some well-known or proven algorithm, which is identified as a secure algorithm as per the GDPR, HIPAA or PCI. If I'm not following that standard requirement, then what will happen? My organization is still not compliant and might be still not secure. 
So standards are developed or modified to set boundaries around the people, process and technology, which will help you to maintain compliance with a certain policy or a certain objective what we are trying to achieve. Right. Again, several standards for each policy you may create based on their classification level. So let's suppose I'm having a top secret data, secret data, uh, confidential data, public data. So for each of the classified data, so I'm going to implement confidentiality standard. And for each of the level, I'm going to have a different standard. So top secret, which is very sensitive, might be for the organization, I'm going to implement algorithm like AES-256. And for other data might be, I'm going to reduce this algorithm, although it is not mandatory, but I'm just giving one example that as per the standard need, you have to implement the control. Okay. So certain data might require more protection. So accordingly, you will be implementing the controls. So standard is, is developed to set boundary around the people, process and technology. And to support this standard, we will be taking support of what some guidelines. See, although it is not mandatory activity. So if you feel that you already have all the knowledge, all the information, then in such case, you can go and implement. But sometime lack of information is going to create a problem to implement a certain method. And in such case, we can take support of guidelines. As I told a few minutes back, some documentations are there from Nest and ISO, which can help you get the proper understanding and then you can implement a certain controls. So if I'm implementing a certain standard, I might be going to follow that suppose for incident response policy, I'm going to follow NIST 861. Okay. If I'm doing risk assessment, I'm going to follow the guideline, which is given there under 830. Okay. For the risk management, I already told 37. So guideline will actually going to provide you the necessary set of information, which is going to help you to drive your action. That's it. Okay although it is not mandatory. So if you don't want it to follow a certain guideline, that is okay, but you have to ensure that it is, I mean, whatever activity you are implementing to support your policy, it should follow all the need, which is defined here. Okay. And finally, you will be creating what one lower level step-by-step -step guideline that is called procedure. So procedure is a low level step-by-step -step guideline which is helping you to implement the standards or policy properly. So if my requirement is to implement the confidentiality and for that, if you selected the encryption, then how to implement the encryption that is defined under the procedure where you will be defining the steps to implement encryption within your organization. Similarly, if I'm implementing firewall, what is the steps to configure firewall, right? Although procedure is, I mean, if I'm doing the same activity from the last 10 years, let's assume, I'm implementing our configuring firewall from the last 10 year. So I'm used to, I'm used to, to do the configuration of the firewall. Okay. So in such case, what will happen? I may not follow this procedure because I'm doing the same activity from the last 10 year. One day I decided I'm not going to see the procedure uh, document. I will simply do the activity, which I'm actually doing from the last 10 year. And there is a complete possibility that while you're doing this activity, one step you missed. Okay. One step, one of the steps, which is given on the procedure you missed. Okay. And because of that step is missing, there is a possibility that there is a certain loophole introduced in your infrastructure. Mm. Okay. And because of that, the attack chances are there. So that's the reason whenever we are implementing all these things, whether policy is standard guideline or procedure, we also ensure that we are verifying all these activities are conducted properly. Okay. And for that, we are taking support of what we are taking the support of audit. Okay. okay. Now why audit we are doing? Remember audit is basically helping us to verify compliance, right? So we need to comply with what GDPR. We need to comply with HIPAA, PCI. Definitely for that, there is an external audit required. Okay, because we can only verify whether everything is implemented properly. So that is the part of internal audit. Yeah. Okay. But if you wanted to get the certification, so you can showcase your customer that we are compliant with GDPR HIPAA. So customers can believe on you or your uh, 
uh, other partners can believe on you and they can do business with you okay so for that we require external audit so audit is basically helping us to verify the conformance the policy was you had implemented a standard what you had implemented or might be any external governance requirement which you have to fulfill so audit is a tool which is helping us to verify the compliance and what is compliance so compliance is basically helping us to what i mean definitely compliance is what exactly uh, we need to follow that is uh, that is what on a high level you can say that yes it is basically called as the compliance right so compliance is the act of conforming to the rules regulations law policies standard which is established by some authorities or organization okay which 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 can regulate uh, or which can relate to various area including legal ethical industry specific uh, internal policy procedure so compliance is very essential for the individual business and organization to ensure they operate within their boundaries set by the governing bodies so we can avoid any legal financial or reputational risk an audit is a tool through which we can verify right so as i told governance is basically directing your efforts so all these things is basically helping us to direct our efforts to you know towards a best direction so in an organization generally we are actually utilizing what a framework framework of what this grc okay so grc is basically one of the essential component of any organization in today's time because here if you see these are the three key things we have governance okay so within an organization governance is important governance is actually going to serve two need first before implementing any control you are doing proper investigation about that control that is also one of the essential element of the governance right so let's suppose i want to implement firewall and you go you went in the market randomly purchase one firewall and implemented in the organization or there is a complete possibility that firewall is not secure firewall it can be bypassed it is having lots of security loopholes right so that firewall is not good not a good solution so what you are doing in such case in such case you are first taking the list of firewalls available in the market second then you will be going through all their capabilities and then third you will be shortlisting one of the firewall which is fulfilling most of your capabilities plus also cost part you are also checking it that which one is cost effective as well this is one of the essential part of the governance only you are doing your due diligence before selecting or implementing any control but you know with this governance risk management is equally important uh, playing their role uh, very importantly here why because if let's suppose that you are not able to do the risk assessment okay what will happen in such case you don't have the impact if you don't have the impact how do you know that which control is best control for you right so risk assessment or risk management effort is equally important when we are trying to implement the control and see compliance which is basically helping you to check whether we are adhering to the policies procedure which is implemented right so grc is one of the term that reflects an approach that an organization can adopt to integrate these three area okay often stated as a single business activity within that organization and so these are the one of the very key activity within the organization which we should be implementing okay so i hope now governance what exactly the governance is that is clear to you thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today